Hello everyone. Today in this video I'm going to show you how to run Fluid and Main Sail simultaneously on the same Raspberry Pi using the same 3D printer. So if you're asking why anyone would want to do this, um, I've actually got several reasons. Um, one of them was I started off with Fluid. I've always been curious about Main Sail. I've always wanted to try it, um, but I don't have another printer or another Pi, and I really wanted to compare it side by side. The other reason is the original maintainer of Fluid um, actually ended up leaving the project, and so there's been a period of time, um, frankly for months, where Fluid hasn't been updated. There are new maintainers that have joined the project, which is great news, and they're starting to roll out updates but it's been a little bit buggy and I'm assuming it's going to be until you know they get used to the code base and get much better at maintaining fluid. So I'm not really giving up on one for the other, but it's really more of a curiosity and possibly a backup in case something goes wrong. I already have fluid running and so in this case it's simply adding main sail to an existing install where I've got fluid. There are three options to install main sail. One is main sail OS, but that's no good because it will destroy our Fluid Pi install. There's Kia um, I looked at, and I wasn't exactly sure what it was. And at first glance, I bypassed it um, to go purely for the manual setup. And taking a look at the manual setup, we've got the operating system, Clipper, and Moonraker already installed. So it's just mainsail. Um, we've already got the web server installed for Fluid. Uh, so it was simply creating and making these configuration files and then downloading mainsail from git on the machine but i looked at this and it just seemed like it might be a little bit more work and a more a little more troubleshooting than i expected so i decided to go ahead with kia kia is a script and if you take a look at it it's this simple well, script that runs um, it gives you the option uh, to install uh, Clipper, Moonraker, Mainsail, Fluid, as well as some other things. You can see here it can actually detect what you have installed. So this seemed like a pretty safe choice. On top of it, other than installing Git, if you don't have it already, it's pretty simple um, because basically is all you've got to do is download this script from Git and then execute the script and I'll show you how that's done in a minute. And really, that's all there is to it. It's not too hard. And learning how to use the script is not a bad idea because there's some alternative versions of Clipper here, uh, as well as some other tools that you might find useful. So I'll let you take a look at this. I've got links um, at the video. Um, feel free to go in, take a click on them, take a look and go and see if there's anything else that you might be interested in installing. But we're gonna follow these install instructions right here, and I'll show you how I do it. I'm sitting here in my terminal. Uh, I'm using Linux. You can bring up terminal in Mac OS. You can do the same thing in Windows. And in this case, I'm going to SSH into the Pi. Uh, this is terrible, um, but this is for test purposes. I'm using Pi as the login here and the IP address. If it asks you if you want to add this to the host file, just go ahead and say yes, assuming you're going to be going in again. And then, of course, enter in your password. And here we've got uh, Linux on the Pi giving us a warning that it's really silly to be using Pi and the standard password. But again, this will all be changed shortly. And here I'm at the prompt, and I'm simply going to the Kia instructions and I'm copying and pasting those instructions and here I'm just going to install git it's most likely installed uh, but just to be sure I'll try anyway you should do the same and because I'm using sudo it asked me for my password and it checked and it turns out I already have the latest version installed no need to update or upgrade I'm making sure I am at root. I was at root, at least for this user Pi. And again, you really shouldn't have to do this, but I'm doing it just to be safe. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, 
the command that's going to uh, gather the script from Git and install it on my machine. And again, it's a simple copy and paste. Here is the clone command. Hit execute, and that's it. The script is done. And so all we've got to do now is execute the script, and that's simply done with the dot slash and the path to the actual script name. And again, you can copy and paste that as well from the Kia instructions. I'm a little stubborn, so I'm diverging just a little bit, but the net result is exactly the same. I'm actually going to change directories into uh, the directory where the script resides. And just for kicks, I'm going to do an ls to see what's here. And there you see the kia.sh, which is the script we're going to execute. And now I'm going to type in uh, dot slash the name of the script and hit enter. And that should execute the script and run the script. You should be able to run this anytime you want, anytime you want to make changes. I'm going to go in and first explore just a little bit here. You can see here it's noticed that I do have Clipper installed. I've got Moonraker installed. And it also noticed that I have Fluid installed. And of course, it's showing me everything else that isn't installed. I'm not going to explain all of this. Uh, you can go back and take a look at the instructions for the script, and it'll show you. There are multiple options we're interested in. Of course, there's Install, Update, and Remove. Uh, we'll mainly be using Install, but also Backup as well. You can make a backup through here, as well as a backup through Fluid. Uh, it's the config file through Fluid you want to back up. I did that already. Um, here, I'm just exploring settings. I hit six. You can't really hurt anything here at this point. And so I'm just going to hit B to go back. I'm going to also press four to take a look at advanced. There isn't really a lot here that we're going to be working with either, but still, it's interesting to take a look. So now to do something important, press five for backup. And here I'm going to select uh, to backup the Clipper configs, the Clipper firmware, uh, as well as APIs and web interfaces, just to be safe and make sure I've got a copy everywhere. So here, zero. And it tells me the directory was created no config directory found. I'm assuming, uh, well, it's skipping this backup, and I'm assuming it's because this was not originally installed by this application. But the other options definitely seem to work. So here I pressed one. It's doing a clipper backup. This one takes some time, uh, a little more time than I thought. So I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. And it completes, and we end up back at the main menu. And then I'm going to back up some of the other options I mentioned a little earlier. In this case, option two for the Clipper API to Moonraker. And again, this takes a little bit of time. I'm speeding it up. And then three for the Moonraker database, which goes really quickly. And then five for Fluid, because I already have it installed. And again, this goes relatively quickly, but I'm going to speed it up anyway. And then B to go back to the main menu with the main set of options. And now we're going to go ahead and do install. So we're going to choose one. And then we're going to go ahead and install three for the main sale UI as a Clipper web interface. And so now main sale is being installed. So here the installer is showing us that Fluid is installed and running on port 80, which is the default port for a web interface anywhere on the internet. So we can't have conflicting ports or two services running on the same ports. Uh, it just, Nginx won't allow it and neither would any other web server. So we have to choose another port. You can choose any one you want to, although it recommends that you don't go above 4750. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to go for port 81. And we hit enter. 
And here's telling us uh, the config file needs the macros for pause, resume, and cancel print. I know already I have a pause. I can't remember if I have resume or cancel print. I don't think I have those exactly. I'm just going to go ahead and tell it yes. You've got a backup of your config. You should have done this using the Fluid user interface, so you're really not going to lose anything if something goes wrong here. So the script configures the port, port 81. In this case, you can see mainsail listening on port 81, and it restarted Nginx, which is the web server. So now you can go into your web browser and enter in the IP address, but to go to that specific port, instead of 80, we want to go to 81. So type a, the address, a colon, and an 81 at the end of that IP address. And when you hit enter, you end up on the mainsail interface. Now we've got a series of warnings here, Moonraker warnings, and there's a couple of changes we still have to make. But before we do that, you can click around to the different uh, options here on the left-hand side. This is pulling the bed mesh from uh, that was created in Clipper that I was able to see in Fluid. Here I can see it without any extra effort within Mainsail as well. And I can see files I've printed in the past. Uh, basically, everything I've done with this printer appears, and which is really kind of neat. Uh, if you think about it, uh, because we really didn't do any effort. It was able to access all the files and everything else that were either used by Clipper and Fluid. So let's solve the Moonraker warnings. They're actually pretty easy to take care of. So here in the Moonraker documentation, there's a section called Policy Kit Permissions, which is where we were getting the actual warnings uh, right after the install when we went to Mainsail. The installation instructions give us two options, option one and option two. I'm going to go with option one. I think it's the easiest. Uh, it's simply, again, running a script that's already been installed. We just have to copy and paste the instructions right here. So we simply go back to the terminal window to the Pi that we had open. If the previous uh, script is still there, still running, hit back or whatever else you need to, and then hit Q for quit. And then at the command line, uh, where we are right here, here I can copy from the directions, the change directory to where the script lies, hit enter to execute that, and it moves us to the new directory. And then again, we copy and paste uh, from the directions, uh, the policy kit rules change, the shell script. It's going to ask us for uh, your password and make sure you enter that in, and in this case I have, and it automatically restarts Moonraker. And just to be sure, I'm restarting the service based on what I copy and paste from the directions yet again, just to make sure. If you go back to the web browser, you see this message, connection failed, just try again. That's simply because we restarted Moonraker and this way it reinitiates or your web browser reinitiates the connection. And if you take a look here, I'm here um, in Mainsail. I can see the command console. It's reading all the temperatures properly. I can go in and modify some of the settings, uh, give it a printer name, whatever the case may be, but it, it's actually live. It's working. and. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, you can go in and reconfigure. This is my first time using uh, Mainsail, and so I'm not exactly sure what all these options are yet, uh, but I'll definitely be spending some time uh, running through these. The one I'm really interested in is the webcam. Uh, before I end this video, I want to make sure the webcam is working. And so if you click on this, hit Add a Webcam, the settings as is are correct, at least that it figured out. Um, I can already see the video showing up here. I'm just gonna give the camera a name, in this case, Cam1, and then I'm gonna save the webcam information. And uh, once I do, we're ready to go. I'm also gonna go ahead and give this 3D printer a name. It's a Voron, so I'm gonna call it Voron1. And you don't have to do much there. Once you enter it in, the changes are saved. And I've simply closed that window. 
And here you can see on the main page, on the dashboard, we've got a live feed of video from the printer as well. And just to prove it to you, I'll make the printer do something. And what's really wild about this, again, is actually fluid and mainsail are both operating simultaneously and you can access them at the same time. And so here I flip to the tab uh, where I have um, fluid running and it works. <laughs> Uh, the camera, it's the exact same camera that both of these are using. They're reading all the same temperature sensors. Uh, you can flip back and forth and make changes to both of them and they impact the printer. And uh, this is just super cool. If you found this video useful and if you have any questions, first, please click subscribe. And please ask your questions in the comments section below. I'm happy to answer any you might have. Thank you for watching.